Hey everyone, welcome back to the IWP Network, or if it's your first time, welcome hanging out with us. Thank you so much for choosing this podcast, and feedback is always welcome. So make sure to check the links below for all social media links, audio and video versions of this show, and merch. We look forward to hearing from you and hearing that feedback, and enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Banging Beers Podcast, Patreon episode number seven. Your first Patreon episode. That's many. Yeah, that's this many. Uh, first Patreon episode, we did roll that one. That one should be maybe all right now. Uh, we have three beers we're going to do. And uh, these three beers were uh, all given to us by a Patreon member, Jen. Uh, Jen, she uh, hooked us up with two from four score. So we have the Jamba um, Papaya Banana and sour sop. Sour sop. We have a Jamba Raspberry Cherry Creamsicle. And we have a beer that she got from her beer box. I don't know the name of the beer box. Uh, so we'll have to find out that. That's for, the one that looks like a Four loco. Yeah. This looks like a Four loco can. It's from Finkel and Garf, which sounds like great musicians in Vegas. Uh, this is a sour ale. Cherries, raspberry, cocoa, nibs, and vanilla. And it's a chocolate-covered cherry sour. Interesting. I think it sounds cool. Chocolate covered cherry. We had a chocolate covered cherry beer from uh, what was it? There was one, um, the one that tasted like the actual, the ones that from uh, Mellow Mink did that one. Yeah, it was fucking excellent. Really good beer. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I was out a little bit yesterday too after the Black Rock expedition, and I yeah. hit both the breweries in Tamaqua. The uh, the Revere Brewery has a a, a a chocolate cherry bourbon stout now. Mm. So uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we got to get some of their beers. Are they canning or anything yet? Uh, Revere cans anything. It's it's Stoker's that doesn't can yet. Okay. Maybe Revere will have to uh, get like three or four of theirs and do like a whole Revere episode soon. We'll have to do that. Um, yeah. So it is it is uh, WrestleMania weekend. So, you know, this show, we, we bullshit a little more. I know we talked in the past. I asked you like if you're a wrestling fan. You said you watched back in the day. When I was younger, yeah. Um, I, I used to watch it. Yeah, um, really cool show out right now. I know this is gonna be like this is like the Patreons are always like crossovers of each episode, but uh, this is a little pop culture wrestling reference. But there's a new show out right now called Young Rock. Have you heard of it or heard, seen I've, of it? I've heard of it. It's I've, really good. Is it? Yes, it's really good. So it's it's pretty much just goes through the Rock's life growing up with his dad, obviously Rocky Johnson, his mom, his grandmother was a booker in uh, Hawaii, uh, and it goes through his childhood, his college days of him playing at Miami University. And then just leads into him, I guess, being an adult. Touch on any uh, freedom in Bethlehem. It, uh, most of his young youth is all talking about being in Bethlehem and oh. going to school in Bethlehem and getting in trouble and being mm-hmm. a klepto and robbing stores because he wanted to look cool. Uh, it's a really good show. It's fun. It's awesome. Yeah, and it has a lot of references. So there's Andre, there's like Andre the Giants in it, and there's a guy who plays Andre. There's Iron Sheik. There's a Macho Man. There's the Alpha and Sika, the Samoans. There's everybody's there. Like the it's it's a cool it's a cool show. Like the one of the episodes, him and Andre go to the movies because Andre was babysitting them. Because you imagine like growing up and you're just like you're hanging out with the Iron Sheik, Iron, Andre, and Macho Man because it's just like part of your everyday life. It's crazy. I, Iron Sheik is my favorite wrestler on social media, by the way. Oh, he is a psycho. He's a loon. And it's yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and PC culture hasn't learned about him yet, so we, we, won't, we won't turn them on to him. Uh, so our first beer here did not pour like I expected. I, I think I had one similar to this, but I thought it was a lot different. So this is the Jambra pine, uh, by, uh, Banana... Sour sop. Yeah, I probably should fucking. I'm laughing. Papaya, 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 papaya banana, banana, banana. Sour sop. Six percent ABV. Two friends checked it in, gave it a four five zero. Oh, um, Jen, Jen gave this a perfect score. 
Bob doesn't she get said, all the chunks. She said this is a fiver all day. Uh, 191 check-ins, average of 398. Uh, four score is a microbrewery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, it's great. It's it's a it's it's a great brewery. They have when we were there, we went to like a Gettysburg trip. We did like the historical stuff, and then uh, before the day started, we were we sat outside and uh, enjoyed some beers and uh, had a really good time. I think that's kind of where Jen found out about four scores. Yeah, from, well, from our from our trip because we did that one episode yeah. with, with the uh, the blueberry ice cream. Yeah, oh, I had that one. one. Um, we had in the Yoda beers. Yeah, the baby Yoda beers. Yeah, the, the brekkie bowl. Yeah, the brekkie bowl. Yeah. They did a release, I think, yesterday of the of the soft swerve, and I think it sold out in like a couple hours. Yeah, uh, you said, they, and I think they've done it in the past too, but they have another uh, collaboration coming up soon with Imprint. Yeah, it's a Jamba Smoogie matchup. It's funny because we matchup. said on the episode we first had it, we're like. Man, that this is the competition of the the the, the, the smoothies. Like mm-hmm. the Jambas and the smoothies are in the same wheelhouse. And instead of being like you're our competition, they're like let's make one together, which is what we love in the beer world. You know, you see people working together. Uh, there's plenty of beers to be drank. You know, it's, you don't have to all be fighting each other. All right. So normally these Jambas are are very like dark in color, yeah, and like thick, heavy. milk shaky. Yeah. There's no dark components to this one though. No, this drinks like, like I want. I, I now I know this is not an ingredient in it, but this looks like pineapple juice. Yeah, it has the same consistency of a pineapple juice. It's just it's very smooth. Yeah, it's you're not, you're used to having a cup of yogurt in your hand. Yes. Yeah. Uh, th- like this drinks like like a glass of juice and not so much like a glass of yogurt. That's a great analogy. Um, I'm interested in what your take is. How much banana you're getting? I'm if, getting too much banana, but that's because I don't like banana. Yeah, but um. I can't believe that it's this thin with the banana in it. Yeah, that's what I would have thought it would have been thicker because of the banana. Like, you can't get juice out of a banana. <laughs> it's you, interesting because sometimes you, do, you, you, t- you get banana get and you get that one candy banana taste. After you start drinking it? Yeah, like, that, that's... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, you, you get much less banana after you start drinking it. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you just get used to it. Maybe it coats your tongue or something. Maybe. The, the, the Bill hit on that's... Uh, it's real banana. It's not like uh, banana runts or any other artificial yeah. candy. That that's real banana flavor yeah. in there. That's tasty, tasty. Um, I know. Like this is we we do score some stuff on here. We'll, we will score. It. We won't th- thrive too much on it. Um, I, I'll I'll go three seven five on this. I really enjoy it. Um, make sure I don't tag pops in this one. We have our own little location tag in. The Bang- Bangabers podcast table. <laughs> I had to make a four score, uh, or not four score, a four, no, four square, square square square. Yeah, yeah, yeah four, four score, square. four square like business thing for my address so I can do that. <laughs> I had to cheat the system. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, I'll, I'll go three five on this just because uh, I could definitely drink the full one. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I would as have a much as a I get uh, the banana. I don't hate it. This is a nice hot day. You're plus, sitting outside plus drinking. Sour sop is not something you ever see, and so I mean, I have really, no idea what sour sop is. I had one when I was uh, I was down in the Caribbean. Apparently, it's like a like Central and South American fruit. It's it's really but, neat. It's, like is it like ap- apple adjacent? It it was it was like uh, I want to say it was like yay big. It had a big thick rind that I had to cut open and scoop the the fruits out. It was we we've been every now and then we're we're sneaking in fruits or i'll bring something next episode yeah what, what did we have last time dragon fruit dragon fruit bob brought dragon fruit and nice. uh it's it's like kiwi almost it's yeah. like it's like eating a kiwi that's uh i was telling him uh it was in an international grocery store in virginia and um uh they had jackfruit there jackfruit is hilarious and, but uh it was the smallest one i ever saw so it was a little bit smaller than a bowling ball and I, I put it on the produce scale. It was still 12 pounds. It was, yeah. It was, I wish that I, I could find the picture because one time I went to the store. We went to get jackfruit specifically. We went to an international uh, supermarket. And we get there and it's like, oh, jackfruit's $1.29 a pound or something. Like, All right, cool. That's not bad. We walk over. We pick up the smallest one they got. Pounds. And I'm walking out like this with a 33-pound jackfruit. <laughs> yeah, it was like 50 some dollars just to try this fruit. Was it good? It smells like juicy fruit gum, and it just tastes like a banana. It oh, has really? like the exact taste of a banana. So you weren't yeah, into it. it. So you spent like eighty five bucks on something. But you it's it. so sticky. Like if you <laughs> if you grab it, 
you got it like it's like it's super glues to your hand <laughs> like the inside of it is so sticky and the only thing that gets it off is more of the fruit <laughs> like if you rub the juice from the fruit it comes off interesting it's good to get to know for your insides <laughs> yeah <laughs> just had to drink the fruit the juice to clean up the, <laughs> yeah, so, to so, clean up your stomach. Yeah, I'll get sticky poops or something. <laughs> like my buttholes glued together. Apparently jackfruit's like super common in um like vegan uh recipes, recipes instead of using pork. Interesting. Like they'll do pulled jackfruit instead of pulled uh pulled pork. Still sounds awful. I mean I'm sure I'm sure it tastes good, but I want goat it in barbecue sauce, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. I want meat. <laughs> I want that meat in my mouth. Uh, I've, so I was at a vegan place that used eggplant to replace pastrami and a Reuben. Really? Uh, yeah. Was it good? It was all. It was okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it definitely wasn't a Reuben. Yeah, it, it, was, it was better than I expected. Those uh, uh, probably should have rolled this more before I did it. Oh well, we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> I've I gave this uh four. I was gonna go three seven five. Then I realized I looked and it's uh. Six percent, yeah. So it drinks a lot lighter than six percent. So just the fact that that's more hidden, yeah. But what do you give it? Uh, I give it a four. Uh, I think it's freaking delicious, man. Yeah, it's really good. I I actually like it a little better because it's not like drinking a glass of yogurt. Which is which one's this? I'm sorry. Uh, raspberry cherry creamsicle. And they actually just had a raspberry cream sickle, so this is the raspberry cherry cream sickle. One friend checked it in, Jen, gave it a perfect five. Love her. Love her to death. She's like, listen, this is my beer. I'm I'm scoring it. 201 check-ins, 427. Uh, once again, four score brewing company. This is uh yeah. Yeah, all that. So growing up, Bob, what, who was some of your favorite wrestlers? Uh well, I, I... When I was in my wrestling phase, uh, I lived in Florida. I, I, I didn't live up here, and uh, they had their own program in Florida. Um, uh, Dusty Rhodes was on all the time. Uh, so of course, uh, if you had Dusty Rhodes, you had to have at least one of the Funk Brothers around. Um, uh, Don the Body Morocco was on there all the time. Uh, uh, Ric Flair just started coming out towards the end of where I was interested in it. Um, I, uh, I have a dusty road I, straight upstairs. Uh, Son of a plumber, baby. Trying to think what the heck was the Russian guy's name back then? Ivan Koloff. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bugsy Malone. <laughs> the, the Italian guy. This is kind of damn delicious. Did anybody yep. else taste this? Yep. I haven't tried it yet. This is soda. This tastes like. Actually, yeah, at first I say I'm not getting much cherry, but then it hits you the cherry. This tastes like if they made a soda out of Luden's cough drops. Yeah, and I'm for that because I'll eat them like candy. If this had a, a hint of chocolate to it, it would taste like a Tootsie Pop. It's like the shell of the Tootsie Pop. This is awesome. Yeah. Once again, not very thick. Dr very no. smooth. Yeah. Like, it, it's How like many sips to get to the same. Yeah. It's it's like drinking juice. Wait till you turn 21. And he's like, oh man, this is a book of bullshit. <laughs> this is boring. My first fucking episode is just nonsense. <laughs> I get to watch all these people. Well, we're going to bring like, we'll get you craft sodas. Oh, we'll have like craft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll have craft. Yeah. They still make Jones sodas? Yeah. That's the thing. Yep. <laughs> Header. It's, it's still like Because Header doesn't drink booze. Oh, they can do their own show. Yeah. The he <laughs> Header, uh, right. he's always bringing like craft sodas and stuff. Hmm. When you do like not cool in high schools and stuff, you'll, uh, you'll be able to come and hang out. We have candies and snacks and stuff. You'll be able to partake in those. Uh, actually, that if you look to the right there, we we have a, a snack crate. So the new unboxing uh -huh. we're gonna do is on snack crate. So we're gonna and that I'm not gonna say what country it's from, but when you get a snack crate, they get all these different candies from that country, and then you open it up and it's all these like the popular snacks That's in awesome. that. Yeah. So we're gonna do that on the next uh, either truth behind a loser or not cool. After the show's over, we'll do like an unboxing video, and then I have a pro wrestling crate over there. We have to do. But uh, yeah, tonight tonight's Mania 37. Uh, it is in Tampa, Florida. Uh, they built a giant pirate ship above the stage. It's awesome. Uh, so that, like now it has. They built a pirate ship in a stadium that has a pirate ship, which is funny. Uh, but yeah, so it's uh, the, they had night one yesterday. Night one, they crowned uh, Bobby Lashley retained his championship against Drew McIntyre, which is a huge shocker. Uh, tag team champions. 
scramble to find out who's in the fight for the women's championship tonight. And that was won by Natalia and Tamina, which is the daughter of Jim, the Anvil Neidhart and Jimmy Schnooka, the actual daughters. So there's a callback for the older, the older, the older uh, generation. Um, the women's champ, it was the first ever time where the main event was two black uh, people of color or black, black superstars. And it was two women. So it was Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for the women's championship. And Bianca Belair is the new champion. Hmm. She has a long, huge braid. Oh, you know has. what? I've seen her. And I was going to say, I remember Sasha Banks from uh, like the last couple WrestleMania. Sasha Banks sure. is Snoop Dogg's niece. Really? Yes. Pretty cool. So she um, kept pulling at this braid the whole fight. So at the very end, Bianca takes the braid and just hits her across the stomach with her. <laughs> And it sounds like a whip hitter. Awesome. Like the whole, like the like the hard cam is here, and it hits her, and everybody on the hard cam just got up and like did the oh my, like they, they had to like walk, they had to walk it off. And Sasha had a huge welt going across her whole body. It sounded like she got hit with a whip, like an Indiana Jones whip. Like, you know, in the movies, like bah, bah. that's what it sounded like. It was fucking loud. I love that. Yeah, she got crushed. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else significant happened. Uh, Shane, Shane, Shane McMahon wrestled. It was he wrestled Braun Strowman in a cage match, which is crazy because it was the second cage match in WrestleMania history. Thinking like just to think about that, that's crazy. That is weird. Um, Who won? Uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah. Uh, they had a cool spot in it where Shane was about to climb out, and he grabbed him by his wrist through the cage, and then ripped the cage half off, and then brought him back in. That's my my biggest gripe with like cage matches and shit is like they're the worst sold matches but like I, I, everything i don't think like, any oh, oh i'm halfway over what if I, oh i'm all the way over but i haven't touched the ground yet what yeah. if somebody were to just pull me the fuck back in like yeah. that is the worst I, thing you could ever do he, I, he's I, shane off the top of the cage i to, love that to his back like, i love that but also why did he not just climb the fuck down he was he was exhausted <laughs> I, I i still think cage match wise you can't top on undertaker and uh mankind well that was oh, a hell yeah. in a cell well yeah but i yeah. mean even like just a general cage match in general like when i was a kid i loved that and then i watched it as an adult and know what he actually went through in that and i'm like oh please don't like, ever do that ever again like that poor guy uh, yeah it's like, what well, why would you do that to yourself have you ever seen that mick foley getting thrown off the top of a hell in a cell or, you, or him getting that. thrown off the top it's being broken into, in half yeah. <laughs> into thumbtacks right yeah on the one you know what every cage match should be both dudes start next to each other, and then they just turn around and climb as fast as they fucking can. Yeah. <laughs> it would be over. Well, That's the entire well, point of the cage. Well, match. the old school cage match rules were not escape to win. That didn't come until much yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Originally, that was the intention: is that you couldn't run away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the the whole idea of a cage is you just wrestled inside the ring and you couldn't escape. Like there, the, the option of escaping wasn't even a part of the match. Yeah. It was there to keep the the match in the ring. Yeah, they actually. Fenced yeah. off the top in yep. the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah the, the hell in the cells. Yeah, I, I remember going to live shows in the Attitude Era. Well, this is even before and look, that. Well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, like looking up and being like, "Oh, uh, okay, I have a cage match tonight." Yeah, because it's hanging up it's above. Hanging. Yeah. Like um, the the first time they didn't put a roof on the cage is when Snuka was like, "I'll jump off it," and they're like, "Take the roof off." <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, and then when it was redesigned with no roof, they're like, "Oh, people can climb it. Why can't they climb out?" And that's when the whole thing kind of started becoming a, dumb. Yeah, it's and then they added a dumb. door to it where you can uh, before, but they still have pinfall. Like you can pinfall and submit yourself in a, in a cage match because mm -hmm. that's how it ended by pin. Um, but yeah, the original idea of the cage match was not to escape; it was to keep it in the cage. Yeah, and they were those big, thick steel blue bars. They were huge. Yeah, the old school, like the video games, you can see it, the the, thing, the blue cage. But uh, yeah, night two, night two should be fun. Uh, and then uh, that, that'll conclude Mania Weekend. It's also a cool thing because like all the independent companies go wherever the wrestling show is and they put on their all their shows too. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, Barnett, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport was we could, this. We could probably still make it down in time and just sneak our way in. Make it to Florida by... Yeah, yeah I'm sure there's a flight leaving. Yeah, I doubt it. It's a two-hour flight. It's, 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 it's a two-hour flight. flight. The show starts at eight. It's a two-hour flight. We would never make it. We could try. <laughs> well, too, and too likely if you're flying out like, like Harrisburg, yeah. and and a layover for like nine hours in Atlanta. <laughs> All right, what do you score this one, Bob? Um, 
I believe I gave this a four and a half. I'm going. I'm going four on this one. I don't know if I could drink more than one of them. It was delicious. It was good. Uh, yeah, it'd be tough to have a, a second for me. Let me go four. Four. I'm gonna split the difference with four two five. Four two five. Yeah. Nice. Um, what what were I, some of the things besides obviously wrestling and horror movies? What are what were some of the things that you were interested in growing up? Like sports um, and. I've always been a big baseball fan. Okay. Um. So, uh, lifelong Yankees fan, um, uh, but I mean, like uh, baseball, like a uh, minor league, uh, foreign leagues. I just uh, was huge baseball fan uh, as a kid. Mm-hmm. How did you land on the Yankees? Were they just because they were like the good team? Like you just kind of gravitated to them? Uh, when I got into baseball, that's all. All my friends were Yankees fans, and I uh, just fell in with the crowd. And uh, it, it wasn't until I was like part of the gang that that I realized all the. The history that they had, yeah. Well, they just but, bought they just bought everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So yeah, everybody else plays for free, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they're just but, like my guys just love the game. We're, we're, we're out there for the fun of it. They're just no, building they, super they teams too. Yeah. They, well, they they just had more money well, I, to pay. Oh, I, I, no, well, in the early days, I mean, it might have been a little bit more different when yeah. there were fewer teams and the playing field was a little bit more level. But I, uh, I wish the NFL would uh, get rid but, of the salary cap. Uh, my team would be the Yankees. But uh, <laughs> yeah, George Steinbrenner, whatever you think about him as a person, uh, he was never afraid to put his money where his mouth was, and yeah. that was his stated goal every year: is we're not here to have a winning season, we're here to win the World Series. Yeah. Well, well that was that. Was it like the late '90s when Miami, well, at the time the Florida Marlins, the owner just said, "I'm I'm going to sp- spend money and win a World Series," and they spent yeah. the money and won the World Series. <laughs> and then, then he and sold then, off yeah, everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like got so my was, ring. You're yep, all fired. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, pretty then, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I yeah. think it was well, like ninety eight or something, somewhere that, around there. Like he, was that he Griffey? just bought like was that all the good, all the good players, and they won the World Series. And then he just I'm traded terrible, everyone I'm terrible off. Baseball. Where did Griffey left. play? Ken Griffey Jr. Was he? Flo- he he was a Mariners. A Mariners. Most of yeah. His career, yeah, yeah. I just remember him being like a big deal. Uh, I remember when they had the uh, foam bats and baseballs at. Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him getting this like a video game, like Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. Yep. And yeah. Well, baseball is a little bit harder to like go to now. Like baseball, people actually care about baseball again. It's crazy. Yeah, it is getting popular. It's one of the first sports that people like, I'm not saying because it didn't have full capacity crowds, but it's one of those things where now it was easier for them to come back because they're like, well, we're not really in a demand where we're packing stadiums out every yeah, time. Because it's like, I think now they're at 25% with the. F- with the Phillies, at least, I think the Rangers 50. are just all all wide open. Yeah, well, like, see, they just have again, everybody. It, it, in the stadium it all depends like on packed. what state you're in and what yeah. their rules are. Is like it that. Pennsylvania fifty percent outdoors now? I, I did, but I, I think they sure. did. They did a, an amendment for baseball because when the uh, season opened, it was twenty, and it so was literally like, like twenty percent for one game, and then it jumped up to twenty five percent. Yankee Stadium was twenty percent for opening day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and one of the other like especially around here now, like um. In a three-hour drive, well, until they screwed up the minor leagues this year, but um, uh, you could probably go to twenty minor league ballparks as well as the the major leagues plus independent teams. Uh, we're still in a pretty good location for that. Uh, that yeah, that's, we have like four around us, and um, yeah. even like um, if you're if you're into it to that level, um, uh, they have what they call collegiate wood bat leagues for the summer, where uh, all the all the top prospects go and uh. Uh, no aluminum bats. It's all wooden bats, and um, they may play like sixty games in a three-month season. Uh, and uh, there's actually one of the best ones. The Atlantic Collegiate Baseball League is basically centered in the area between uh, Lehigh Valley and Staten Island. Yeah. So there's there's a team in Quaker Town. There's a team in Allentown. Is, is the Red Baron still a thing? No, they, no, they're they're they Yankees to the uh, to the Rail Riders. Now, yeah. I remember the Red Barons. Yeah. The, so we have we have the Rail Riders. We have the Fighting Fills. Yep. We got the yeah What's yeah Iron Pigs. Iron Pig. Yeah. yeah. Iron Pigs. I went yeah. to a Reading yeah. Phillies game one time for uh, Meatball's bachelor party. Like his brother <laughs> bought tickets for it. Yeah, it's, and it's fun. It was like I was they like, oh yeah, it's like beer selection. He was like, oh yeah, the, the beers weren't expensive. I think yeah. I paid five dollars for a beer and a. I went to a Reading Phillies game and had a really good time, and it rained. Oh. And then man. I went to a. Right, right, what was the other one? The Rail Riders, the Rail Riders game, and it was like 
it just fucking took forever. I was like, get can this fucking end? It was like Dude. it was like one one in the ninth, and I'm like, I, it was like eleven thirty at night. I'm like, I'm fucking over this. We went to this game. I got hammered drunk off only five dollar beers on a baseball stadium. And at the end of the night, I was like, oh, well, how much do I owe you for you know the ticket? Because we had the best seats you can get in the entire stadium. We were in the dugout. They do, they do like next to the dugout, they put a second dugout where they just put seats and you can just sit there. And your seat is right next to first base. Like I was giving this dude so much shit from the other team that he tried to fight me by the time the night was over. And Meatball's dad was pissed. But I was like, oh, well, how much do I owe you? You know, I'm like, damn, like, this was a great night. These were awesome seasons. Oh, they're like $25. I was like, there's yeah. no way. And, yeah, and they have like the, the packages. Absolute best ticket you can buy. In the I, and they have the packages on the third baseline that that includes food. Yeah. That's cool. Like, it's all, all included. I think the I Iron Pigs, a, a ticket is $10, and it includes $10 worth of concessions. We have really good, like, local hockey, too. Like, Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, I mean, we're... Set up nice yeah, for the, sports. T- t- yeah, Hershey is an affiliate you can of the hit Capitals. You we can we hit have, you have Wilkes Hershey, you have Hershey, Wilkes Barre, and then Reading, Reading yeah. Royals. Allentown yeah. is uh, oh, yeah, the Phantoms. Yeah. Too. The Phantoms yeah. Yeah. Well, I go to Reading Royals all the time because you can sit in the glass for like ten bucks, mm-hmm. and you go there and you get sto- you get a you get a Stoker's Triple IPA for nine dollars because you buy the glass for nine bucks, and then all refills are nine bucks. I used to work at the the craft beer uh, bar in uh, PPL Center. Really? Yeah. Oh man, it's fucking awesome. There's a guy in the place with the Reading Royals. His name is Gooch, like that, which is already hilarious. His name is Gooch, and we're screaming Gooch, and then all these little kids around us are like Gooch. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, we're banging on the glass. And we he got into a fight in the game. We're like Gooch, 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 and, we, and he beat the shit out of the guy. But the when he first fought him, they they like went in and separated them real quick, so he he really couldn't beat him up. And we're like boo, and he's like he was like, pissed. So they get in the box, and we're like. We're yelling over at the box like, you fuck him up when he comes out. Don't take – you're for fucking ready, baby, right? <laughs> Dude, I guess he was talking shit to him through the box like, yo, we never got to fight. Like, when we're out, like, we're fighting. And like, he goes, I don't even care if you're a part of this or not. I'm fighting you when we get out. And the guy was just like, it's on. So as soon as they got out of their penalty, they left all their shit in the box and just came out and swore up and fought. And I was like, awesome. yeah. And that was the night Gritty was there. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was great. Got to show off for Gritty. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was happening. They had all the mascots there. Gritty was there, except the Philly fanatic wasn't. They would have fought mm. just to be funny. <laughs> that was around the same time where Gritty beat up a kid. Remember that? That was great. Yeah, I, I still. If he did it, they say he didn't do it. But if he did it, good on him. I think he did it. I think it. he. I think he actually murdered the kid. Kids fucking deserve it, dude. Their <laughs> homeboy was probably just gripping up on him, like, "Pay attention to me." Yeah. And bring back the Pukemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, did we score this? I'm sorry, I'm losing track. I think we did. Yeah, I think yeah, we, we did, did too. Yeah. yeah. What? Do you, what? Do you, are you in any of these local uh, baseball teams? Like, which one do you like to go to? Uh, the Reading Phillies all the time. Yeah, yeah. Hershey Bears too. I used to go there with my grandfather all the time. Hershey Bears are a blast. Like the hockey, that's yeah. like personally my favorite. I mean, that's like when you go from north to south. You start out, you got the Rail Riders. Mm-hmm. Um, um, then you come down. You got all the teams in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, the the Phantoms. Uh, I skipped over the hockey. The little Penguins up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got the Check. the Phantoms. The the Iron Pigs. Uh, you got Reading. You got hockey in hershey you have baseball in harrisburg the there's uh, the nationals have a farm team out there the senators uh harrisburg also has a minor league soccer uh, soccer team too that plays on city island it's a good time they're like the little soccer games they're fun yeah, yeah. then uh there's professional soccer in philadelphia aside mm-hmm. from uh all the big three yeah or big four mm-hmm. dc has a we went to go see a dc united game uh, yeah, that's why I follow in MLS, DC. DC? We went and seen Wayne Rudy play. It's fucking uh, awesome. Well, you know, there, there was no Philadelphia team when, when the league started. So. Yeah, the Union. Uh, they said it's a nice stadium, too. It's, it's a, I've it's only a ever rough... been there for uh, for concerts. I've only ever oh, they been do concerts for, in that state? Yeah, well, they do the, the Rock Allegiance Festival there. Okay. That's uh, the, the United States men's national team plays there a lot, too. Yeah. We're at the, the Union's uh, home Is stadium. This... Not it's this a year. Gross is area, it next though. year's World Cup again? Or they took they they? they could... I think it's twenty twenty two. Not sure. Yeah, I love World Cup time. So much fun. Well, in like another couple, not not too long. The the World Cup in, is in America. Like it's gonna go. It's gonna travel all over North America. It's gonna be like Canada, 
North uh, America and 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 South America. I think um, that the, that was the plan that it was going to split between us, Canada, and Mexico. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the last bid they made um, was the the three countries like that. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the next one's going to be 2022, but I'm not positive. If if, I if believe the... I read something about them wanting to do. Uh, Philly for a World Cup, they were like putting in a bid at one point. That's one of the. That's one of the. Like you would, you would get a uh, not the World Cup, but you would get World Cup qualifying games in Philly and and DC because they they like to play soccer games for some reason. I think because it's still a grass stadium, or it's like the, the turf. I, I it, might, it might be still natural, but the Washington Stadium they like to play on that one, so they use the Washington team. Uh, they they use Philly, but they have all those MLS teams now too that they they would use, but. Uh, if it became a thing, I, I would definitely travel to go see a World Cup game. I don't even care if it's our country. Yeah, just like, go see it's a World an Cup. Experience, at yeah. very least. They're well, just they're st- they're such good experiences. Even a circle, but I know Philly's supposed to be hosting the All Star Game, so like in twenty for baseball or yeah, really? Oh, yeah, wow. in a. But I think it's not for a while yet, like twenty six. Now, like twenty twenty six, because it's geez. gonna be the anniversary, like a uh, like a. Centennial year, it's, yeah. It, it's going to be in July, so they're going to make a big, I'm, like, like a I big said, deal. I'm one shot away from fully vaccinated. I'm like, after taking two years off and not doing anything, I don't even care if I'm into it. Like, I just want to go do stuff. Like, I want to go to baseball games. I want to go to Rail Rider games. I want to go to Reading Philly games. Like, I just want to do stuff. I don't want to. And now, like, I'm going to start scheduling the podcast in the summer where, like, I only do stuff every other weekend. Like, Friday night is still a thing. Well, like, we'll do a show, but like, Saturdays and Sundays when we're off, like, I want to go to breweries. I want to go see games. I want to do things. Uh, that was like going to games in the Dominican Republic. That was a blast. Oh, yeah. oh that would be cool. That's a different experience. I, I want to go see like a, a soccer like, event like, in a different country. Like, I, I was at the, um, I think I went to 10 baseball games last time and uh, the, their soccer league had the championship match while I was down there. It, it ended up being a, a three hour drive on a bus to get there. But I was like, I'm never going to be this close to a, a national sports championship that I can afford. Yeah. <laughs> so then we got there and we got there early on purpose. Cause you know, you're expecting delays and travel and stuff. And uh, we were one of the first 10 people. They, they gave the first 10 people in line free tickets. So we didn't even pay. Holy shit. That's awesome. Yeah. I want to, I would love like one of my goals. I want to go to UK and I want to see a, a, a soccer game and you like Manchester United or something. And like in, in Manchester, like I just love the chance. I love the like how people go to the pub and they all leave the pub as like a giant group and they just sing songs on the walk to the stadium. Like I want to be a part of that journey. Like I want to be like just screaming. Well, they, on the- they do that kind of shit on like on SEPTA on your way to Union Games in Philly. Do they? Yeah, they go nuts. Like yeah. Union fans are shockingly so are DC United. DC United, my, my dad said, he goes, we got there, and he goes, why is no one sitting in that corner? I said, that's probably going to be like, I don't want to call them the hooligans, but that's probably going to be the fan section. And he goes, oh, and then they all came in with all their stuff and big drums. He goes, why the fuck do they have drums? I said, I said they're not going to shut up the whole game. Yeah, it's and the they, soccer hooligans. And he goes, they did. And he goes, he goes, literally for 90 minutes, they're just like, oh, like just <laughs> screaming and chanting and beating the drum. Every time a score, uh, they, someone scored a goal, they threw a fucking All smoke three bomb. times. They threw a, uh, yeah, <laughs> they threw a smoke bomb into a, into a garbage can and smoke shot up in the <laughs> sky. We should have won because Wayne Rooney got, he scored two goals that he would have had the go ahead goal, but they called him off sides and he wasn't. And not everyone. Fuck. He, like, his first during warm up, he broke one of the LED boards. Uh, he took a shot too high and he hit the board and oh, popped shit. and popped like two two bulbs out of it. And I was like, I just watched Ryan Murdy break a suck. It was just it was cool to see him on the field. Like he was, dude, he was ripping shots from outside, like from like the twenty two, and he was just and he hit the board with it. And I was just like, wow. Like, oh. I was like, I would hate to be a goalie. Like I would never want to take a yeah, shot from cool. him. Yeah, That's square. Yeah. All right, so it's- here we are with uh, Finkel and Garf. Uh, limited release of the chocolate covered cherry sour. What were you going to say? I'm sorry, I cut you off. Uh, the goalie thing isn't exclusive to soccer either. I would not want to be a hockey goalie. No, <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> they have well, a little more cushion. Though. Well, but you're also playing with like 100 pounds of pads on. Yeah. And yeah, trying well, it was, but to one stop of the... a tiny puck that's going at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> one, of, one of the like legendary goalies said something about like, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's great to be a goalie. You miss one fucking puck, and everybody's screaming at you. The light goes off above your head. He's like, it's terrible. Yeah. And I can't, I can't imagine the anxiety. I would rather get hit with the puck than have to deal with that. You know, 
and, and I think one goalie said too, he's like, yeah, like it's like it's like getting shot with a bulletproof vest on. Like you're not gonna die, but you're still feeling that bullet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like you're like, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive, I'm alive. <laughs> because that's what's like getting hit with a puck. <laughs> like, just please, someone step in front of that. <laughs> he's he's his sticks way back here. You're it, like, it, oh it's, my god! It's like even the guys that like slide in front of it and aren't wearing all of those pads mm-hmm. and block it. I'm like, Psycho. no, thank you. Just let that go by. Catch one in the knee the once in a while, and he gets up yeah. hobbling, and you're like. I'd be done. I would never walk again. I'd that cry. Would you would it. see me as a hockey. I get hit a puck and I would just bust out <laughs> in full tears. Fucking quit. <laughs> I, I, I still think hockey's probably like one of the hardest sports. I yeah. lay on my, my yeah. knee wrong when I'm sleeping and I'm not walking for the week, you know? Like you'd be shocked how, how hard so- like soccer is. Well, well yeah, but because okay, you're always going, but like not just that. With hockey, you're still the same, like you take a body on body collision, running as fast as you can. It, 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 the only thing, the only thing between you and those two bodies is tiny little shin guards that don't do shit. I coached this kid at North Google who literally was a running back his entire career in football. All he did was get hit and hit people. He went to football. He went to soccer practice. His first soccer practice, he was going down the sideline. The kid just went to take the ball, and they just collided. And he hit the ground. He's like. I'm done for the rest of the practice. I can't move. Like I, I he goes, I was the hardest I've ever been hit my whole life. <laughs> he's like, he's like his because he took a knee to the thigh and he was all fucked up. Yeah. But then, yeah, you think about it, like hockey and and pro soccer players probably are are paid the least out of all yeah. other professional See, sports. And it's the two hardest to actually play. Yeah. One, one of the things with soccer though is and, and I'm a big soccer fan. I watch games from all over the world, is um uh, that point of time where, where what they call diving became a thing. Yeah. And, and, and you would fake like getting hit or whatever. And, and it's, yeah. It, 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 it's still a huge element in the game. And uh, they'll go back and, and they'll show it over in slow motion. And like, like eight times out of 10, like, you never, you never even fucking touched you. What they do you that do? hockey like, all the time too, man? You, you, know, you can actually like, catch a penalty for it in hockey. They're, they they're, see you fake. Well, that's, that's an actual, hit. that's an actually, it is an actual penalty yeah. now, but, and, um, so most of the time they don't catch it because it's the officials. But what some countries do now is like the, they go back and they'll review the game afterwards. And yeah, and the, the, rather than getting the red card, they, they find them. Yeah. NBA is doing that now too, but it, it, they're every day does it, but they're hypocritical. If, if, if a big name star does it, they don't yeah. say a word like LeBron James will flop 14 times a game. I, I still think he's yet to pay yeah, a penalty. That's, that's one of the, my biggest beef with basketball is that, uh, uh, these guys are all supposed to be the best. Like, uh, uh, everybody fucking travels. Like, uh, you know, like nine step layup, yeah. no fucking dribble, no. Yeah. They call uh, they call it a pro step or a pro hop. Yeah, you're like, no, that's a travel. Yeah, There's just actually a, a rule about that in the book. You should look it up sometime. Yeah, it's called traveling. <laughs> no, but if you do it and you jump but and you land on both feet, then you do another all, step. It's like they're they're all about trying to make it exciting so people watch. Yeah. yeah. It's less about the rules anymore and more about... Remember when they used to play defense in basketball? That was yes. awesome. I remember those days. Um, yeah. All right. So we got this cherry chocolate cover theory. I'll be honest. I don't get a lot of chocolate in it. No. Me neither. Me either. Which I'm not complaining about because I think every like style that I've had aside from maybe outside of a cream ale that had chocolate in it, I thought was odd because I associate the chocolate with either like a porter or a stout yeah. or something that has more weight versus... We like, had that chocolate, that chocolate orange. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've brown that was, barrel. That was good. Um, this beer and this beer are very, very similar, except this one's a lot more tart. It's almost like drinking the same beer. They're very similar. This one is like, I don't know, the diet version of the other one. There's not as much flavor. Yeah, of, of thought, any of the flavor. I thought this one was kind of cough syrupy. Yeah, I, I, taste wise, not texture wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> um, what, what are you gonna score this one? Uh, I'm gonna give it a three. Three? I think that's fair. Uh, what is this? The chocolate? I'm, I'm thinking I was gonna look up a gr- garf, a chocolate covered cherry sour. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, that's not it. Cherry sour from Finkel and I like the name Finkel, Finkel and, garf. and Garf. Yeah, we'll go three. Three on that one. Uh, all right. I like how the profile zippy. It's a zippy beer. Zippy beer. <laughs> zippy beer. Yeah. Side of the flavor That's profile. It. Zippy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. I think that'll do it. Uh, well, let's. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do. We'll do this here. Uh, beer of the night. What are you going to go with, Cheese? 
Uh, the the Jamba Cherry. Jamba Cherry. Bill? Same. Same. I would agree. Yeah, that's beer of the night. Second one, I'll go with the banana. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah. And I think Canard, I'm going to go with the with the the the, uh, the bombs. I like yeah. the bombs. Yeah. This, is, this looks like a four local can. I do. I, I do agree. I think I like that. The yeah. Uh, it does look like, I don't know if it's on purpose, but like, especially, let me see the second. When you get, when you get it like this and you can't see. Oh, the sour looks like four. Looks like four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we want to thank Jen again for, for doing these beers. Um, we do have more beers that Jen got. Um, we'll probably do them on Patreon, or I'll just drink them and do them on the, the, the like Facebook live. Um, and, and do them that way. I'm, I'm going to start doing more live videos with the beer reviews on Facebook just to kind of inspire people to maybe do them as well. Maybe we'll get more people to jump down that road. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for the Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let people know we exist. We do have merchandise. I am working to do, I'm working on making a discount code again for Teespring and also for T Public. Maybe get a discount code that lasts forever so it doesn't go away. And then I'll hook you guys up with the uh, the discount code for being for being loyal. If you have any ideas of what you would like us to do, fired. If uh, <laughs> um, if you have any uh, suggestions on what you want to do for uh, Patreon content, let us know in the comments. Uh, you guys have your own little comment section, and join us over on Discord. It's a lot of fun. Uh, once we get more people in there, we're going to start, we'll start getting some conversations going. We'll talk and hang out, but until then, we'll see you guys next time. Here's some faith in exile. Now you can hit it.